Hello, Michelle. She's our uh, Michelle. Hello, Lisa. Michelle's already been having trouble with this one because she's been crying. Very difficult. Yeah. This is going to be an interview with who I thought was Shannon Watts, but Michelle, uh, tell uh, everybody what Shannon Shannon said about her name and how she changed it. And by the way, hi Eric, I love you. Eric says hi, Mama, I love you, and he also wants me to tell you that um, he says he's giving you a big thumbs up and it's a big cartoon thumb and he's going thumbs up on the social media I'm mom working, thumbs I'm up out on it. Great oh, job. yeah yeah he says you're doing awesome um okay so i, I just want to uh just prefix a little bit here too that um shanann had come to me uh in a dream about a week ago and so she's been giving me little hints and and I had a feeling that this was going to be the day because she was here a little earlier today with Eric. So I was I was um very, very happy to meet with her and, and feel her energy. And the energy of why I was tearing up and crying too is she has I mean, yes, what's happened to her is horrible. Her energy, her spirit is beautiful. Wow. Her heart, the she is just and she's got the energy of a mother. Like she just, I, I just was very overcome by her energy and like mother um, Mary energy. Right? Yes. That's, that, that's what Eric just said that she actually does have um, a vibration, a mother Mary vibration that you, so you just channeled that from Eric. Oh, I think I did. Exactly what he said. Yeah, you did. You did. There's hope um, for me, yes. So, Shanann and and I knew this because of course many people that'll watch this video will know that and she wants this acknowledged as well because she wants to knock out any thought that I am getting information from videos or anything else like that um, because she said she's um, there's a purpose and we will get into it uh, she's very strong too like oh, she's wow. a businesswoman. She is like ready to go. She's a, a loving, strong, powerful energy. So she says, I just, um, yes. Okay. It, she wants me to also say, um, hello, Lisa. And she says, thank you so much for having me. Like oh, she's just honored to have this opportunity to speak. But she also says, oh, she says, she says, thank you. Thank you. She's just, she's so, um, she's so very excited and this is why she's laughing because she said that all the videos that she was doing on YouTube um, a lot of people would make fun of her afterwards watching all these videos because there's such a social media presence from what she did before she passed um, and then all the videos that were available for everybody to see and she says that's created such a great connection with the world and why her case is so popular as well. Oh, I was wondering, but I, I didn't really know anything about you. But, but, but wait, back up and, and uh, Michelle said that you changed your, na your name on your birth uh, certificate I, I, so, and you wanted it pronounced not Shannon, uh, but Shanann, right? Well, she was, she, I called her Shanann and um, I had asked her because I was curious. I just said, I heard her parents um, speak and say Shannon. And I, I heard it in two different um, ways. Ah, okay. And so I'm not sure how, she didn't say exactly how it was done. So I'm not sure if it's when she got married, but there was a document and she's just saying that she changed the spacing of it and yeah. just how it was pronounced. Okay. So she says just people started calling it that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, I just also want to mention about what she's wearing because it's pretty spectacular. Oh. Um, she has on a, a long white, what looks like um, a satin gown. Um, it's got like a um, spaghetti strap. It's a little bit open in the back. She's giving me a little bit of a twirl and showing it off. It fits her body very nicely. And then it's got like a trumpet bottom. And where the where the side split would normally be for your leg, it does split, but it's got kind of like a silver inside of it. Like it's a oh, sparkly inside. And nice. she's got on bright purple shoes. Like wow. really beautiful, big purple heels on. Yeah. 
That's so. cool. <laughs> it was pretty hard to miss. Pretty hard to miss. She's making that very prominent. Girl, you need to teach me how to dress. Oh my God. <laughs> she she told me to sit, to be in black today. She said because I had something different on, and she said it's too too busy. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> All right. So um, can I start asking you questions or do you want to say anything else before we get started? No, she says, yes, ma'am. Um, she is acknowledging as well that her children are just behind her and there's somebody to the side holding her baby. So she's just making acknowledgement that they are all present, but it is her that's being interviewed. It's her oh that's gosh. speaking. All right. Uh, has Eric been treating you nicely? She says, like the brother, just like oh. a brother. Oh. She goes, a rascally one at that. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. All right, so can you tell us what happened that night? She said that she was coming home to repair her marriage. She had no idea what she was coming in to step into. Now she says um, some of the questions that you have are going to ask some of the details. So she's just asking, would you like me to tell you in sequence what happened to me that night or only, only if, if, you if like you think it would help. Yeah, only if you if you think it would help because I think a lot of people need closure surrounding your death yeah. so whatever you think is yes. appropriate go ahead okay she was on a business trip she was coming home she says it was a late flight. She was tired. Uh, she's talking about being physically uncomfortable and being physically unwell. Being tired. She didn't have any sense. Um, and I just asked her, how did you feel mentally? Like, what did you feel about the situation that you were walking into? And she's, and I, had just said, did you sense that something was wrong? And she said, I did sense something was wrong, but I was sensing that my marriage was ending, but I was also not accepting that and just curious as to what was happening, what was going wrong, starting to dread that there was more to what I was feeling deep in my gut, that there was someone else, that there was something else going on. But I was determined, I was determined in my life to do a lot of things. And I was very determined to repair my marriage as well. Okay, so let's go on with the steps. I have a lot of questions. So if you can make them brief. That's what, yeah, she's, yeah, she just said it would be better if you asked the questions because. Oh, okay, all um, right. She says there's a lot of blanks to fill in and the questions would help it stay oh, structured. Okay, so you came home. Was Chris at home, your husband? Yes. yes. And um, did you have any kind of meaningful conversation right away? And how did you seem? There was nobody on the main floor. Um, she's showing me walking in and she's saying that he was downstairs. She went downstairs looking. Okay, were the kids there? The children were not in their beds. Okay, where were she, they? Da with Chris? Downstairs. Oh, okay. All right, so then what happened? You, you Did you walk downstairs? She walked downstairs. Chris was downstairs. The children were asleep on the bed. She's just showing me. She's showing me that Chris is in front of her and that she's starting to talk to him. 
About what? She says that there was no, um, it was very, what, why are the girls downstairs? Uh, like superficial stuff. Not like, let's talk it, about it, our marriage. No. Okay. No. Someone no. asked if, if, they, uh, if, if Chris killed you in, in your sleep. I think, yeah. Or did he, did he attack Shannon while she was asleep? She says she was attacked from behind. Okay. How shortly after when you went downstairs? She said that she turned around and went back upstairs. Chris was downstairs. So she's showing me walking away from him and going back upstairs. She was in the bedroom and she's showing me laying down on her side. Okay. It looks like her left hand side and him not being up there with her. Okay. Then what happened? Okay. So she's just showing me being pushed from behind on top, and this is not Chris. Oh, it's not Chris? Mm -mm. Is it a woman? Mm -mm. Who was it? The hitman? Okay, just give me a second. Okay, she's what she's saying to me and Eric is just trying to help me understand here that there is some detail within names and things that she's not going to say. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Because of implications or because of, um, she says it's not okay. Eric's talking about the part of the contract and, and because there are parts to this that have not yet unfolded. Well, was it something that someone, was it one person? And it was, a, was it a male or a female? It was a male that was killed it? her. Not Chris? No. Was it a friend of, of Chris's? Or a paid for assassin? There was no money exchanged. Um, there was something, she's saying it wasn't money, that there, there was some sort of arrangement. There wasn't money, but this has a direct connection. She's not saying the name, but there's a direct connection to, through Chris, to a woman, which feels like somebody that he, and I mean, I'm aware too. I do have an awareness of the case. So I do think it's important to say that as well. And she's making that direction connected to someone he was having the affair with. Was it Nicole, affair with. Nicole Kessinger that you're talking about? I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. Was it a relative of, or, you know, of, of Nicole's? With somebody familiar to her. All right. So, how was Nicole involved in this, if at all? And will she eventually be, be arrested? What she's saying is that she's talking about pressure. Okay, so she's talking about, because um, she just wants to, to look a moment at what the dynamic is is she said there was pressure because she's looking at the girlfriend as wanting as there being jealousy as there being um two different sides to her oh, okay yeah yeah that right, there was so something else and that there may not be full awareness um there was something else that this male involved has some other motive to it. The same male that we were just talking about? Yes. What was that motive? 
it may have led to some sort of financial gain, okay. but there was no money exchange. Like there was nothing that was like here I'm paying you. Yeah, maybe there's a promise there was, of money, but it never, you know, exchanged hands. She says yes. Okay. Um, how, what was the cause of death? She's saying that uh, extreme pressure to the throat. Strangulation? Tight- yes. Yes, she's tightening. Oh, did tightening you suffer? my throat area. Oh, did you suffer? No, she, she says it was very quick and she was not looking directly, was not looking in the eyes. This oh, came okay. from behind. Oh, okay, okay. This is being pushed. Um, I, there's like straddling to her mm-hmm. from behind. Oh, okay. Um, it then uh, the, the, your uh, children were watching this, uh, the girls, I guess. Somebody asked, were the girls really alive when he drove to the oil site? Or did he lie about that in the second confession? The girls went, did not make it the full trip. The um, he did not. Uh, okay, um, the little one was killed first how um and by whom and like choking no um uh like a hand over the face oh, okay smothering um, smothering <laughs> um by whom This is the same male. Okay. Well, did Chris kill anybody? No, not with his own hands. Well, so the, this gentleman, gentleman, this man was the one that also killed the kids. There's so he killed the little people, one. Three, oh. three oh. people. He's three people involved. Wow. Uh, so there were two other people that directly murdered one or both of the girls this the same same man the other two it's like an orchestration so they were so what just encouraging it just it? planned um oh. planned to look like an accident okay yeah of three people Wow. Oh, so the little the little one died in the home, right? And what about the, the other? One, the little one. The little one died in the truck. In the truck. Okay. And then how did the other two die? I guess there were two others. I'm not sure. So what she's doing is she's just. Um, I'm just seeing, I'm seeing images right now. So she's showing me and I don't see anything graphic, um, like nothing like that. Um, but I am seeing that the little one, um, so the baby was still in Shanann's stomach. Oh, okay. Shanann was, Nan was killed in the home. Mm-hmm. Her body was transported along with her children that were alive. And the energy I feel in the vehicle, there's one, two, three, four living, one deceased. Um, the 
oh, oh yeah, okay, and then the one baby was still, uh, okay, yes, still living. I was still alive inside her. Gosh, um, I got that be? It can't, can't have been for very long. It, it, no, no. Um, was dying. Oh, yeah. Um, her, um, okay. And I mean, I don't want to be too graphic about it, but um, so the little, the youngest daughter, the youngest girl was killed throughout the drive before they reached the destination. And the older girl, this would be the oldest child, mm -hmm. was killed on arrival to the destination. How were those two killed? And by the same man that killed Shannon? Mm -hmm. What's that now? Yes. 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 All right. So uh, the other people were, were just helping with the orchestration and trying to make it a cover up. I mean, how did he plan on making that look like an accident? Okay, um, so there's connection to the location. Um, she's saying an explosion. Um, that the plan was to set it up as if she had come out to, okay, okay, somebody else was going to drive her car, that she was going to come out looking for Chris, um, stage it, she says, stage it like a show, like a, um, about cheating, about um, infidelity to have a fight about infidelity. She said, oh, okay, yes, okay. Okay, so somebody was going to drive her vehicle out, which would have contained bodies. Okay. And there would be something set at the location for a disaster, for an explosion. Okay, I got you. So, um, well, obviously then he planned it, but so this Nicole, what, ex what exact part did she play in all this? She's calling her like a puppet master, like a, Oh, Oh wow. Was she the um, brains behind the operation encouraging Chris to do this? Saying, she's saying desire, um, coming from feelings, desire, um, jeal jealousy. Mm -hmm. um, she's so, talking about her having um, like a, a wanting. <sighs> okay, this is, it does have some money drive to it as well. Um, so she, she wanted money. Nicole wanted was money. Play, she was playing Chris. She was like, um, like I'm not, he, he was easily swayed. He was easily, like okay. easily kind of a pushover. Okay. Um, yeah. Also held in a lot of anger. Um, so will she ultimately be become arrested? I mean, it looks like then she was the mastermind of the operation and did a lot of the planning and coordinating and she set it up okay okay uh, um explain this to me shanann exactly how okay so what she's showing me is like manipulation for chris to make the decisions okay i see okay so was there an insurance policy involved 
I mean, what, what, what's this big deal about the promise of money? I mean, I don't know if they were rich anyway. I have no idea, but was there that? Chris, Chris played a, a bit of a different game with her in letting her know how much they had. Okay. How much, how much money they actually had. Um, so uh, what she's showing me is insurance from accidental death. Um, oh. She's got the word responsibility that she's showing me. Um, responsibility on the company or the oil, um, the oil company mm -hmm. having to pay for death. Wow. Um, He's saying there's different angles, there's different pieces to this. Okay. So the main motivation sounded like it was money and jealousy. Yes, and somebody that truly wanted um, a new start. Uh, she's saying that because she doesn't want this to look like um okay all right she just wants to explain that this is not um she's seeing this from a spiritual perspective because she says that people are going to get very upset in feeling that blame is being shifted she does want the understanding that he had a behavior um, he had a, a personality disorder. Um, she's saying that very difficult to recognize, but this also played part in him wanting like a fantasy in his head of what was going on because she's saying he was detached from reality and in a fantasy of things starting well, over and all this money and no more debt and all of this other oh. thing and saying, yes, it's an accident. It'll be better for everybody and talking himself. Oh, um, yeah. He doesn't feel emotion. Like, he doesn't feel... She says it's for very the greater good. good. Oh, look, now, he was wearing these patches, these Thrive patches. I wonder if that helped, uh, I mean, made his whole mental thing worse. Mm hmm Okay. What's she says that she just said you could you could say that, but it was more of the transformation of his body that gave him a self or a false sense of self-confidence okay was he abusive to you prior and did he have any other affairs prior she said that she when she was alive was not aware of any affairs that he had but she did suspect at different times that maybe he would have done something um, <clears throat> She says that he did not have an affair in the way that we would look at what has happened with anyone that he had encounters with people. Oh, okay. All right. Um, um, she says he was not, he, he was not physically abusive, although he, when he would get extremely wound up, and he didn't often express his anger. Um, he would sit back. He's saying that there was a bit of a manipulation to how he okay. behaved yeah. and that he would hold back and let her get upset. Oh, God. Did he give you any signs? So it was more of a mental. Yeah. Did he give you any signs the, you know, before your death that you see in retrospect? You know, that he wanted to end your life? Um, she said that she did not in any way believe that he would have killed her, that no. that was not, there wasn't a worry about that. Okay. Um, but his behavior, she says, was very odd. Mm. He was very detached from her okay. and behaving in a way that she didn't recognize. She said that he was not behaving like the man that she thought she was married to 
uh, was uh, did Chris have the, the other what three help moving the body, the bodies? Chris helped me. Chris dragged her body. Okay, but did the other two? Did, were there three men or two men and Nicole? No, just one man. Just one man. Okay, got one, it. One one man and Nicole oh, and Chris. Okay, got it. They okay. Was your death and uh, that of your children a spiritual contract? And so, what what could be gained from it? She said yes. Um, she said that her spiritual contract is and has not been as much about her personal soul plan as it was um, what we, we would consider, we'd put the language of sacrifice to for the collective. She says that she has had lifetimes with Chris before. Oh. She's had many lifetimes with him before and in each lifetime she had lost her children. Whether she was in a different gender or in the same gender and in this lifetime the only way that she would go into another experience with him because this was about the um she's calling it the balance like a um eric says like a karmic balance mm -hmm. um she says because this was the lifetime to balance this and this had to do with the collective learning because there's a very big collective connection mm. um, around the world to this and she said that she would not come into this life and lose her children that she would have to go with them oh, that yeah. she would not be left behind to experience that again so what what did should the collective get out of your death and that of your children She says there's multiple lessons that are evolved around in her death and that of her family. She says that there are personal, um, she's calling them catalysts mm -hmm. that spring off from her friends and family. She also says that on the collective scale that because of she was aligned with her life purpose and although it's very hard to understand and it's very hard to accept as a human being that this was exactly aligned to what I was meant to do and the videos that I had left and the memories that I had left of who I was and who I truly stand for was able to show other people that regardless what they go through, that not everything is exactly the way it's seen. She's talking about in comparison, looking at other people's lives. She was living a life on Facebook, showing this perfect life. And she says she really did have a wonderful life. But what she wanted was this family and this togetherness. And she was doing everything in her capability to be able to engage Chris in the way that she wanted and he wasn't she's calling him not necessarily a willing participant and she's saying that there is a mask there is a mask that's worn and there are many many people around this world that are in relationships where there's masks that are worn and not everybody can see what goes on behind closed doors and she says you may not have seen bruises on my body but I had bruises on my heart at times yeah. and I was without my children and I didn't show anything different I didn't allow anything different to come through and nobody would have questioned that but she says this is to show that this can happen this is about being in the moment and being aware of what's going on in your life and this is also about looking at my life and what I triumphed through and what I was doing with my life and that that is continuing to carry on in many people's lives because of the connections that we all have 
she's saying that there is a soul connection with so many people around the world wow. that have connected so personally to her and to her children. And she's also saying thank you for that. Sure. So why did Chris, he wanted a clean slate. Why didn't he just divorce you? Was it the money and Nicole's jealousy or whatever? It was the money. It was like a, she's calling it like a ball of confusion. Oh. Like about his head, him just going for, um, like he, he got this high. It was like an addiction. Yeah. He got this high, this feeling of being with her and he would do anything that she said. He was like a puppy. Do you think that if, she, that if he had not had the affair with Nicole, he wouldn't have had her killed? She says it would have been a matter of time before something different had have happened. And one, because of, this was her sole plan and agreement, okay. but also because this was like um, the right people at the right time with the yeah. right mixture. She says it's like a recipe. Oh gosh, a recipe for disaster. Someone said, stated that Chris was standing in the corner of your bedroom while you were being murdered. Is that true? Or was he still in the basement? Or He was up on that floor when she was killed. Um, not, not, somebody not was there. waiting in that room or in the, in a closet or like something darker a, could be a closet but I feel like it was exposed to be able to see her but he was in the basement and so um she's showing me him coming up the stairs like being at the bottom of the stairs listening oh okay hmm. um have you forgiven him and have you visited him in jail she says yes this is this is my sole plan um, she goes, she says, and this is what is very hard for the human mind to understand. She says, as a soul in my spirit, I've released myself from that life. I do and have been near him. I have seen him. Um, She's saying that he has not yet come to terms with what he's done, despite the words that he said, that he does not yet take responsibility and says that he holds hope for being released. And she said that that is not anything that holds her back. She wants to make it clear that her spirit is in forgiveness. Okay. And is in understanding yeah. of the spiritual agreement. And that's where she resides. Did she, did he eventually tell the truth? The complete truth? She says no. All right. What about this other man? Uh, do, does the law, do, do law enforcement officials know about him? Are they going to prosecute him? Same thing about Nicole? So on Nicole, she's not giving me, um, she's hovering over her energy. Okay. So like it, it's not sure of, of really of an answer I can give clearly on that. Okay. But with the other man, there's an awareness. There is an awareness, she said, to something greater than what is being revealed. Oh, to, to the, the public. Rest wow. The public. All right. Uh, have, do you guys do your children and you plan to incarnate or have you already reincarnated? She says, uh, uh not anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Um, she's saying that she is enjoying being in spirit and she's talking about, uh, not until the rest of her, uh, yes. And Eric says, uh, they are all together on another level, but he says that's a story for another time. Okay. <laughs> but yes, but she says that that she will reincarnate into the world at a um okay. She's saying that this is more um thirty plus years from now 
now. She's talking about with when her parents, when her family, oh, her I current see. family. Okay. All right. Um, uh, tell me, describe what you saw when you first transitioned and when the girls transitioned. She said that when she first transitioned, that she had an awareness. She said that there was a guide. Um, she's showing it's like an angelic. I'm not seeing anything physically. It's a pure white light. She mm. said it was very warm. She had a very instant awareness. Um, she says there was, there was no shock past the physical death of her body when her consciousness she's talking about being out of her body before her body was actually gone okay so she had seen what had happened and the guide that was there she's showing me being enveloped in light oh. to be able to immediately have awareness to be able to immediately have um a sense of peace in remembrance of what exactly was happening mm. and eric's just adding that this is not always the case this oh. isn't always what happens but with her this was part of her soul agreement because she wanted to have her um spirit with her children mm. to receive them so what was that like when your children transitioned She says it was all a very blessed coming home. What were the children like? Were they laughing and happy and smiling or were they in shock? She's, she's showing me pure smiles, mm -hmm. uh, like running to her mother, like um, almost like this is, um, she says, like it was a bad dream. Yeah. Like that's but, how they disconnected from it. Did they eventually ask questions? Like what the fuck just happened, man? Um, no, part of the soul agreement was that there was, it, um, Eric's just saying that, um, this is something that isn't completely uncommon with child spirits. Yeah. Um, when they pass in ways like this, that there's not that complete shock because it's more, um, a lot of times it's the experience for the soul, but it's more about the lesson or the, um, the spiritual agreements that comes from that soul passing so that they don't really have that complete fog that okay. maybe somebody else that's had a longer yeah. life would have. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, just ask these to be answered as quickly as possible. Were two okay. of the girls, Bella and Cece, sexually abused by Chris? No. Uh, what was the relevance of the green step and Bella's climbing? I guess climbing on it. I don't know. I know nothing about the story. Or was there any significance? Not saying anything specific with it. Okay. What was what evidence was missed on your body, if anything? Well, she's not pointing out that anything was missed. Well, did, um, was the other guy's DNA anywhere? Like, if she fought, you know, and no, she said he had uh, gloves. She's oh, okay. showing me like rubber rubber gloves yeah like um, um those latex like, yeah they say uh, was she wrapped in the blue throw no um she's showing me her body in uh like sheets like lighter okay. colored sheets and she's wrapped up like um like a, like a mummy. burrito. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, why did like she tell? Why did you tell? Like, you, okay. Why did you tell your mother you were sorry? I don't know. I guess before she, you died. Oh. Okay. So she's um, she is very connected to her family. Mm. Um, they all are. They all are, and she's showing me um, her mother has awareness. Her mother has a, her mother senses her, feels her. Um, okay, so she says, it wasn't a sorry I did something wrong. It was a, a sorry 
that you're in pain. I'm sorry that you're going through this. And she says that this is part of the pain of the soul contract of my family as well. Was as there a family and individual? Was there a saying sorry while you were alive with your mother? Like, sorry, I married this asshole. No, she said that they, they, everything that they saw of him, mm -hmm. that they really loved him, that they really trusted him, that they really felt that she was well cared for and she didn't show anything different. Did, That's did, did what you believe, he held. Did you believe in an afterlife before you died? Sorry, say that again. Did you believe in, in an afterlife? you know, before you died? Oh, yes. All right, so the relevance of the fire, of course, that's because they wanted it to be, an, it looked like an accident. Was that the relevance of the fire? Um, evidence, burning evidence. Oh, okay. Burning everything. Now, was the photo of the wrapped up doll, doll sent to you as a warning by Chris? Or by this man or Nicole, I don't know. That um, she's saying that that was orchestrated by she's saying by the female, oh, by the girl. God. All right, real quick. This is what I ask every notable figure and celebrity like yourself. Quickly, what was your spiritual mission as Shannon uh, Watts this lifetime? She said it was adversity. It was overcoming. Oh, she's very strong right now. Sorry. <laughs> oh, poor you. Oh, I'm sorry. Just take a moment. Uh oh, you're muted. Did I just go out on you there? Yeah, it's it's showed that you were okay. muted. Okay. Okay, I'm good now. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So um, she said it's to show adversity that despite what you, um, okay, yes, my life was not always in front of everybody. I wasn't always on social media. I didn't always share everything, but I had worked through so many challenges in my life. And I continued to go forward and go forward because I was always very determined to come from a place in my heart, even when I didn't think that that was even present. And so I wanted to show other people that they could do that too. Uh -huh. I wanted to show other people that that was, that that was possible for them as well. That you could, that you could that you could just, you can overcome you can, anything if you want. You could overcome anything that you can, you can follow your dreams if you can believe in yourself. And she says, these aren't just words, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. these are not just words. Yeah, she true. says, if you truly believe in yourself, you can do anything. And if it sparks some sense of excitement and passion in you, you can keep going to the top. And she said, my life was very much about showing that. And I am still doing that from spirit that my, who I am and what I stood for is still helping other people. Good. And so that's good. I was going to ask you that. What, what is your life's work well, over there? So helping people to understand that you can, I hate to say survive, but thrive in the face of adversity. Were you here to learn anything? Yes, she says there was some, um, she says accepting myself regardless of my circumstances, uh, believing in myself and believing in my own manifestation. She said that she was very, um, she's like determined, like she's showing boss lady across yeah. the front of her she's like oh, i was determined that's awesome yeah. so, and so you so, did accomplish that i think right yeah. you ended up really loving yourself she did she did and right. she said that um that's a message that she wants to say that she is not suffering and she is ab oh my god i can't believe she's saying this because she says i'm thriving <laughs> oh that's awesome 
because of pride. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any, do you have any regrets? I wish I wasn't so hard on my family sometimes. Oh, I think she we goes, all. So I, I want them to know. I want them to know how much I love them. Any other messages for like your parents, or I don't know if you had any siblings, or, or do you have any special messages for anyone? She wants to say, um, "I love you, mommy and daddy." Um, She's uh, kind of like doing this to, she's got a brother. She's doing this to her brother. Aww. Um, she's also um, putting a heart around her little dog. Aww. And, um, and, his, and his friend, his dog's little friend. Aww. Putting a heart around the dog's little friend. Um, That's sweet. She said that my family knows that we're all together. Um, my family knows that we're with them, and she's just saying that we see each other in our dreams. Oh, that's awesome. Um, can you share a, a, another life that most influenced your life is, is Shanann Watts? She's showing me a lifetime that she had that she and she's got Chris in this lifetime as well. She says that they were both husband and wife in this lifetime. Um, this is back of, okay, Eric saying this would be um, late 1800s. And there was abuse, uh, a lot of physical and emotional abuse in this lifetime, but she had lost her children to a disease one after another. Is it typhoid, typhus, cholera? Yes, yes, yes. You just said it. Typhoid. Ty ty typhoid, typhoid fever? Oof. Yeah, yes. Mm. Uh, one after another. Mm. And she's saying that she suffered extreme loss and felt abandoned by her children. She said in this lifetime, she wanted nothing more than to be a mother. She wanted to mother her children she wanted that connection she very much and as i said before her energy is so mothering and so sweet um but she said that was her dream so she was able to okay so she had health issues and wasn't sure that she was going to be able to have children yeah okay um so she went through that worked through that fear mm -hmm. and into that belief that she was able to um and she's saying, including the baby that she has with her now, oh. um, the little baby boy that was not born. She says, I was able to have three beautiful children in this lifetime, and they're all with me. You remind me a lot of me, very determined, wanting nothing else but to be a good mother. So, and overcoming a lot of obstacles. She says, yes. Yeah. She says, yes, she, um, she's agreeing. And Maybe I don't have that Mother Mary energy vibe, but whatever. I mean, I'll take what I can get. She says there's a lot of people that would differ with that opinion. Oh. Uh, is there anything you want to share about you that really not too many people or anybody knows? For example, Marie, uh, Madam, um, uh, Marie Curie said that she had a little doll sewn inside her one of her skirts. So quirky stuff or, or not quirky well she says um uh, she just showed me all of her shoes so she says everybody knows that she goes i have a thing for sparkle um she okay she says i would never get up and sing in front of other people but she says i love to like sing on my own like sing in the car sing in the shower oh my god me I too. To dance I, wouldn't around to, and yeah. I wouldn't do that to the masses but yeah me too yeah wow. yeah, yeah. Um, oh that's sweet. that's why she's that's why she said that yeah that's, you guys are alike yeah so eric do you have any questions for her and michelle do you have any questions for her before we close oh god i don't want to get into crying here but um i just want to thank her 
Yeah. And I Eric. Think too, yeah. Because this, yeah. This has been amazing. Mm. Sure. Eric, Eric, do you have any questions? We'll give Michelle a moment. Yeah. He goes, dry it up, Michelle. Dry it up. <laughs> Rub some dirt in it. It's, Eric. It's the empath. Eric, Eric, you it. better love on her. <laughs> love on her after this is over, please. But Eric, do you have any questions? I always do. No. Um, he just, <laughs> he said no. He says, um, he's talking about, he says, Shanann is, uh, he said, I have a comment. He says that she's spunky and she's fiery and she's a lot of fun. So he's just saying that they've enjoyed their communication. And do you play with the kids? Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Good. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, this was yeah. awesome. Thank you, Michelle. You this guys was got awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You guys got to check her out at thehealingh-art.com. I'll put that here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Eric. I love you, Michelle. I love you, Eric. Thank you. Love you, Lisa. Love you, Mama. Bye. And Shanann goes, Mwah. Bye. Oh, bye, bye Sh Shanann. I love you, too. <laughs> she says she loves you, too. Bye. bye. Oh.